All right, lads, back with another video. Today, we are going to be looking at what are the best careers in Vermintide 2 right now, no DLC required. So if you've been looking online, if you've been looking at builds, you're gonna no doubt find that there's gonna be a lot of DLC weapons brandished around. A lot of DLC weapons making up the meta, making up the builds. You're gonna see a lot of DLC characters, a lot of DLC careers sitting at the top of the various tier lists. So what happens if we take them out of the equation? What happens if we take them off the table? What are the best careers? What are the best careers for each hero taking into account not only no DLC careers, but also limiting our access to the base game weapons? A good question. It's one we're gonna get into today. There could be a few laughs, maybe a few tears. Uh, there's gonna be perhaps some light entertainment and you know, actually stick around to the end of the video and you might even have the chance to win a jet ski. You won't, but probably, maybe, look, I can't say for sure, but as I said before, there will be the chance of some light entertainment and the chance of light entertainment perhaps is more important. So let's get into it. And number five, going with, when it comes to Barton, my boy, the Ironbreaker. The Ironbreaker is an absolute machine and he does not suffer from the lack of DLC weapons. He is still a machine. He is unkillable. He does his job of being the best tank in the game and he does it with ease while still putting up them epic damage damage numbers to boot. Now, normally I would put Ranger Vet and, uh, at this position in this list because Ranger Vet is insane OP. However, that is when he gets strapped up with the Glockwork Pistol. No Glockwork Pistol, no DLC Hammers, and his OP status is slightly diminished, allowing, in my opinion, the Iron Boy to just sneakily take this spot, right? This is what I love also about the Iron Breaker. You can swap him out, okay? Cog Hammer, see it in a build, no dramas, right? Just apply this simple rule. If Cog Hammer, then Great Hammer. I mean, Great Hammer, it's it's epic. It's basically up there with Cog Hammer in overall effectiveness. Maybe just reverse the attack pattern. You are absolutely sweet. It staggers everyone. It smashes everyone in the head. It's great. It's the Great Hammer. It's got great in the name. What more do you want? Cave some skulls. Enjoy yourself. Um, same goes through the Jewel Hammers. Jewel Hammers can be swapped out very, very easily for the single-handed hammer. Now, Hot tip, single-handed hammer is actually, in my opinion, one of the most criminally underrated weapons in the game. And in many ways, it actually outperforms the dual hammers. So, single hammer, uh, fast attacks, light attack one and two, plus the push attack have the tank modifier. Uh, it staggers elites. Uh, light attack three has tank plus 10% crit chance. Heavies, uh, they're really good. They're fast. They smash everything. They have shield break. And it has a 20% dodge bonus. And, and this is where it gets absolutely hectic, has 4.5 stamina shields, which puts it at only half a stamina shield under an actual shielded weapon. So that is absolutely nuts. You put that in the hands of the Iron Breaker, who's already granted an additional stamina shield as a passive, and now you have more stamina than an actual shield in other classes. However, you also have that top mobility and massive damage output. Absolutely awesome, awesome weapon, super underrated. Uh, range weapons, yes, Iron Breaker, he goes down a little, little bit from not having the Troll Hammer Torpedo, best weapon in the game. However, he has Drake Fire. Drake Fire is awesome. Drake Fire pistols. Have you used them? Well, you should. They're absolutely amazing. And he has a flamethrower. I mean, it's not that effective. You can't shoot specials, but someone else will do it. And I mean, I've seen Choco B use Drake Fire pistols to very, very high effective rates. And if Choco B can do it, then the average player can do it guaranteed what else he got handgun one shot crossbow one shot headshot great grudge raker it's a shotgun it can one shot kind of unarmored sometimes at close range it doesn't matter they're all good he is the iron breaker he is amazing he's handsome he's decked out in armor and he's one of the best players in the game do not fall for the trap that you shouldn't play iron breaker uh, or that you shouldn't play him as a new player there's some sort of meme going around that if you do that you'll forget how to play the game completely and you'll need to uninstall the game it's fine play the elf a couple of matches you'll get your four back it's all good Let's get on to number four. Number four is needs no introduction apart from this, which is of course in and of itself an introduction and it is the Handmaiden. Now, Handmaiden, not talking about DLC, um, I still would have probably put her here. She's amazing. Uh, if you're new to the game, it's very, very easy to overlook Handmaiden as she doesn't do anything flashy. Uh, her ult doesn't kill things. Uh, and if you have a look at a lot of her talents, a lot of her passives, they're just straight flat uh, stat increases leading to believe that she's just boring. Well. I mean, I need to disabuse you of that notion. She is not boring. When it boils down to it, Vermintide is about attacking. It's about blocking. It's about dodging. And she can do all those better than anybody else. 
Look, you mix that with her ult and her 50% increase to revive speed means that she can save your team again and again and again. She is the true queen of clutches. She gives anyone next to her a 100% bonus to stamina regen. That is absolutely insane. And a cherry on the top of an already very, very spicy Sunday, she gets a bonus stamina shield. Well, a half stamina shield, doesn't matter, still awesome. Uh, one thing to note, if you're playing Handmaiden and you are the last person left alive, just know that every single person will be expecting you to clutch uh, and failure to do so will likely result in a lot of resentment. However, that doesn't matter because you are going to get the clutch. You're the handmaiden. That's what she does. I mean, weapons wise, she has the elf space weapons, which are all great. She does lose the spear and shield, which is arguably her best weapon, uh, but it doesn't matter too much for the purposes of my ranking because she still has sword and dagger, which is absolutely amazing because of course it is. She has the two handed spears, which is uh, spear, which is absolutely amazing. And basically her increased attack speed and all her other passives and, and her talents mean that she can basically wield anything. So like great sword, pretty weak I would say in the hands of most other elves. However, she just makes it work. She can make anything work. Seriously, she just spams push attacks on that bad boy. Uh, they're super awesome. Uh, they're very, very quick, have a 25% crit chance. She can just spam those bad boys all day because of her stamina regen. Um, also, one-handed sword on her, very underrated, very good weapon, great cleave on the lights, massive armor damage, shield break on the heavies, 10% inherent crit chance on the heavies. Uh, that works great. Also has a 25% dodge bonus, uh, and it has a 100 consecutive dodge count, which for all intents and purposes, uh, that's infinity, because if you are doing more than 100 consecutive dodges, you have got bigger issues. So anyway, range, she loses the jab, she loses the moonfire bow, it doesn't really matter. She has the trusty longbow. You can't really say she's at a disadvantage when she has such an epic, epic weapon like the longbow. I mean, she's S tier, she's S tier all day. Play her, love her, think about her constantly. Think about her in the quiet hours like we all have. There is no shame in admitting it. She is the handmaiden. Get amongst it. Get using her. Moving on, number three has to be, I didn't mean to rhyme then, the magnificent, the magnanimous, the mercenary. Now, I think he is also absolutely underrated and most tier lists always going to favor Mr. Grail Knight. They're going to put him on top and I mean for obvious reasons. He's insane. He's very, very good. However, that do not mean that the Merc ain't good, right? I hate to see my boy overshadowed. He's insanely powerful. He can do massive DPS. He has incredible team support. He is tanky. He has access to some of the best melee weapons in the game. He does everything and he has a get out of jail free ult that knocks everybody back and then also heals people. Absolutely, absolutely awesome. Uh, looking at his talents, and this is probably one downside to the Merc, uh, and he doesn't really have much build variety. Either you build for max power or you build for max speed. Uh, you know, that's really it. I mean, but however, uh, is that really a downside? Because, I mean, both of those are epic, so what else are you going to build for? Team support? I mean, you've got to be selfish. You deserve it. I mean, and that's another thing. You are going to hear Vermintide YouTubers go on about how it is a team game and green circles don't matter. Yes, they do. I mean, come on, let's be honest, they do. We want them, we want green circles, we want to dominate, we want the dopamine hit. We love seeing every green circle in our greedy, greedy little hands and that is why you pick the mercenary, all right? You're always going to have the greens every time, okay? Now, all weapons are viable with the Merc, seriously, every single last one of them. He does miss out on the Bretonian longsword. I mean, but seriously, he can make anything look good. He is the Merc. He is an absolute master. Some standouts are uh, Executioner's Sword. Uh, absolutely just delete the heads of absolutely everything around you. Tank modifiers on the lights. So big cleave, big stagger. Add that to his passive boost to cleave already and things get absolutely hectic. Uh, you think the Execution Sword, oh, it swings very slow. Yeah, guess what? Has 20% inherent crit chance on the heavies, baby. So guess what? Put some Swiss Slaying on there. You have it reliably procced. You basically got a 20% increase plus all these passive increases, pace strikes, you name it. He's amazing. Uh, Halberd, very good. Sword and Board, very, very good. Uh, one-handed mace. I absolutely love the one-handed mace. I love it on Barden. The one-handed hammer and the one-handed mace are basically the exact same weapon. Uh, but it, you know what? Guess what? Awesome in Ironbreaker's hands, even better in the Merc's hands. You know why? Greater power, 
Greater power means greater stagger, it means more murder, means more rats bleeding as you stand victoriously above their pulverized bodies. Amazing, that's what we're here to do, we're here to kill. Range weapons, I mean look, there's nothing to write home about, but he does have the handgun, and that's all you're gonna really need. It's a one-shot monster, aim down sights, it goes through shields, absolutely smoke things. He's got a shotgun, nothing to write home about there, you know the deal. Uh, you know, low range, high damage, shield bash, does it all. Rapid fire handgun, you can run in infinite ammo builds with that if you want. Uh, one hot tip on that, click manual reload instead of letting it auto reload and you'll get your shots out faster. It's a hot tip, it's the mercenary, he's an amazing career, you're gonna get greens. Do not be discouraged when you see those ground knights dominating in quick play, you can do it better with the right build. I believe in you, you can do this, okay? Now, Moving on right along to number two, and it has to be Salt. It has to be the Witch Hunter Captain. Well, basically, Witch Hunter Captain epitomizes this list in that he's hectic powerful, uh, and he's not diminished in any way by the loss of access to DLC kit. I mean, no one can actually argue that his best melee weapon isn't the rapier, and no one can really argue his best range weapons aren't either crossbow or brace of pistols. So, I mean, it don't really matter. You get him straight out the box, right there ready to go and available to have the best build and someone access to like best character best builds in the game straight away unlocked ready to roll i mean very very good stuff how can you go wrong he provides amazing support in that he gives everyone a potential 20 percent damage buff uh, on taggable enemies he gives everyone 25 percent crit chance on his ult that's insane an amazing class he does insane damage, he can melt hordes, he's a certified elite destroyer. He insta-kills people when he pokes them in the head, what more do you want? Uh, a couple of things that you do not know about the Witch Hunter Captain. He has an additional 5% crit chance modifier that is unlisted. He also has an additional 25% uh, headshot damage that is unlisted. So you can pair that with Death Knell, which gives a further 50% further headshot damage and his passive that insta-kills on crits. And I mean, does he not come bearing gifts? What more do you want? I mean, his ult, as said before, absolutely legendary. Smokes everyone, knocks them all back, and then gives you the means and your team to just destroy everybody in quick succession. Absolutely awesome. Uh, honorable mentions to Salt's other base careers because Bounty Hunter and Zealot also really do not need DLC to absolutely shine, um, yes, especially Bounty Hunter. Um, I mean, the, the Axe and Dr. Fauci are pretty OP on Zealot, uh, but we're not going to talk about that. So, uh, Rapier. Witch Hunter Captain, he's all about the rapier. We know it, we love it. We've talked about it in a previous video. Uh, and then we've just got the pistols. Not much to know about the pistols. Not much to know, just a lot to love. Uh, two fire modes, one fast and less accurate, one slower and accurate. It does have a weapon special which spins the, uh, the pistol around your finger. Pretty cool, right? Does it achieve anything? Yes, it does. It makes you look and feel cool. It gives you confidence, which is gonna make you more attractive to the opposite sex, guaranteed. Uh, crossbow is going to give you an additional 10% crit chance when you zoom down the shot. So you combine that with his hidden passive, that's 15%. We haven't even done anything and we get 15%. Don't even have to worry about trinkets, nothing. Absolutely amazing. Witch Hunter Captain, he is an epic career. He is one that you can get into right now. You can dominate, you can be a force to reckon with, you can be the king of the greens like you were born to be right now, so get into it. All right, so that leaves number one, and I think, do we already know who it is? It doesn't matter, it's the Battle Wizard, because of course it is the Battle Wizard, so. I mean, again, she is another base career available straight out the box and is absolutely insane. I would say that her OP insane status is somewhat diminished by the loss of the Coruscation staff, which is DLC, of course. Uh, but that is really only one chapter in the long book of things about Battle Wizard that are overly OP. Uh, as you unlock each talent with the Battle Wizard, she just gets more and more insane. Famished Flames on level 10, such an absolutely busted talent, increases fire damage by 150%. Do you want to know something? Do you know how she does damage? She does it via fire. Now you've just increased it by 150%. That is insane. 25, level 25, she gets Soot Shield, which gives 30% damage reduction if she lights people on fire. Uh, do you know how often you're going to be lighting people on fire? The entire match, everyone, start to finish. They will be on fire. Your friends will be on fire. You'll be on fire. Everyone will be on fire. Always. It's absolutely mental. And then we get to level 30. And guess what? She can use her already amazing ult and she gets to use it twice. I mean, what in the dang heck? Shut the dang door. Get out of here. It's absolutely insane. An absolutely mental, mental, mental class. And you can use her right now. 
Uh, Melee-wise, she is not missing out in any way from not having access to the DLC. She has the Fire Sword. She has the Daggers. They are her best weapons, absolutely no doubt. I've talked about the Fire Sword before in previous videos, but basic strat, all you want to do is heavy attack, block cancel, repeat, and every single thing in front of you will die. Um, the Dagger... It's sort of similar in a way. Uh, light attack four has a 10% crit chance. All light attacks are nice and fast at around 0.3 seconds. Very, very quick. Uh, heavy one and two, they both add a bit of burn damage. However, it is only one tick of burn damage, whereas the fire sword heavy one adds two to three. Okay, just FYI. Uh, also, the heavy one actually it acts like a blast from the beam staff, not as a shield bash like the uh, like the heavy one on the fire sword. So again, just not as good. Uh, one advantage that it does have is the push attack adds a bleed effect, which actually has four ticks of bleed. So not bad, not bad. You can stack that with the burn on the heavy, uh, but. It is highly mobile, half push cost, 20% dodge bonus, double dodge count, very, very mobile weapon. Um, so yeah, awesome, awesome weapon. Uh, let's talk about staffs. I mean, do we actually need to talk about staffs? Look, there's no coruscation staff, but look, all you need to do, use the beam staff, all right? Use beam staff, use bolt staff, uh, use the con flag. Fireball, eh, firestorm, ooh. but... Look, they're all great. It's fire. It's, it's the battle wizard. She's amazing. It doesn't matter what she does, okay? Just use her. She's right there, ready to go. Start winning. Start using her. Get her happening. Uh, there's only one downside to the battle wizard, and that is the impact that she has on GPUs everywhere. She not only is the bane of raddies all over the world, but she it's also the bane of my GPU. She makes it cry. She makes me cry. So please stop using her. Just use an elf and shoot me in the back of the head with a javelin. I find it more therapeutic. So anyway, that's the list. It's the end. It's over. If you disagree with me, feel free to put it down below. I know you will. I'm replying to comments in the next six to 12 months. Um, thank you very much for everybody for watching. Uh, I'm Unfortunately, we are not going to be giving away a jet ski today. Uh, I, I tried to get it happening. Uh, it didn't happen in the end. Watch for the next video. And in the next video, we might be giving away a blimp. So uh, see you then. Laters.